We last left Maria and Raymond on the boardwalk as Blumenau, the Anarch Baron of this these parts, at least so self-declared, departs the cafe. Raymond is left alone at his table with two iced teas. And Maria, in the near distance, she'd been keeping an eye on things, people going back and forth. There were a couple of watchers, undoubtedly, but... As Bloom now makes her exit, the observers disappear as well. This sucks. All right. I look around across the street, up and down the sidewalk. She's got to be here somewhere. Maria, come out, come out wherever you are. I slowly make my way into the cafe after seeing the last... One of the observers leave. Ah, uh, there you are. Did you see? Yes, I saw you speaking to a rather fancy-looking woman, hmm. as well as some of her scouts around in the area. They all seem to have left by now. That was no woman. That was the self-proclaimed leader of the opposition movement here. I'll look around very carefully. I'm not sure if we're within earshot of anybody. Not sure who might be listening, so I don't want to speak in obvious terms. Maria, should we go for a walk? Would you care for a stroll? Sure, why not? Good, and then we need to check in with our associates. I will rise from the table, offer Maria my arm, and move off in the direction of the Atlantic Ocean. I hear there's a boardwalk thing. Mm Mm-hmm. I'll take his arm. As you both make your way along the boardwalk, again still heaving with people even this late at night. I suppose it's not that late. Early evening, people are still attending restaurants, going to the casino. There was a time that Atlantic City, a long time, that the city was destitute. Practically rubble between the Second World War and all the way into the 80s. AC was a bit of a joke, at least until the gambling licensing took off in the late 70s. Then the tourists came flooding in, a casino venture on the East Coast. It was only natural that certain Giovanni interests would follow, along with many other kindred. Before then... It seemed like this was just going to be yet another dead city, but now it feels throbbing with life as you make your way down the boardwalk. And again, the sparkling lights, some of it a bit gauche, a bit gaudy, but the rest of it reeking with vitality. It's reassuring. You're in a domain that may not seem secure, but at least the feeding should be easy. Until we reach a more secluded part of the uh, of the area where I feel we can talk a little bit more freely I will bore Maria to tears with uh, my observations about the recent history of the city and its casino renaissance oh yeah the, the global financial crisis was a blessing for us you know I mean there's always been connections between uh, the big global banks and casinos and the seamy underworld of you know organized crime and smugglers and drug traffickers and arms dealers and whatnot. But, you know, before the 90s, Maria, these unsavory elements, you know, we all dealt masonly in cash. But then, then, thanks to that financial meltdown, we started to work our way into the modern banking systems. No, seriously, I am surprised we don't have a clan platinum card yet. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, You don't need to uh, try so hard, just like act like you belong here and it will be fine. You know, I wouldn't go pointing any fingers if I were you, Maria, but okay. <laughs> looks like we're uh looks like we can speak a little bit more freely here. Wow. Were you close enough to hear any of that? Um very little. I was mostly just trying to keep an eye on you. Thank you. I'm sure she had eyes on on me too. I mean, not her eyes. Oh yeah. Either. That's not what I meant. All right. <laughs> You're a big help. You know that, right? Okay. 
here are the bullet points. The Anarchs are into religion. Well, at least some of them are. They've got a church. I'm not sure exactly where it is, but um, apparently there are services or religious meetings there. That sounds like something we ought to know about. Mm -hmm. She also talked about um, somebody named Miss Strand. We heard that name before. Zingaretti, the guy at the in the penthouse mentioned there. She gave me her phone number. I can't help but think that the leak we're after might have something to do with her. We should at least question her. Anyway, this Blumenau has some pretty significant financial investments in the cities. I think she pretty much owns Mr. Zingaretti. Hmm. Yeah, I know. Hey, for all I know, maybe Zingaretti was right. Maybe we did neglect our responsibilities. I don't know. We've had a lot going on from what I hear. Hey, before I forget, to uh, two other members of the family. Well, we already heard about, what was it, L L Lubango? And uh, she dropped a couple of other names too. Leah Milliner and Hope Duncern. Do they mean anything to you? Maria has heard of Hope Duncern before. Uh, Hope was at one point based in Boston, if it is indeed the same kindred. Uh, and a reason the two of you ever crossed paths was because Hope's interests were in hospitals and care facilities. Uh, she didn't have so much of a financial investment as a, a union pull over various medical workers. Uh, in terms of yourself, Ray, you heard the name Leah Milena. She's a Pretty effective East Coast money launderer, to be quite frank. Uh, there's n many ways you can paint it. Ooh, I, I like her already. Mm hmm. And she makes her way up and down the East Coast, largely sticking to New England, but uh, she, she goes as far north as Canada. Um, washing money for people, having meetings, teaching them how to best conceal their financials. The fact that she's in Atlantic City right now may have something to do with it, or it could be an uh, unhappy coincidence. From what you know of the woman, she moves around. Oh yeah, I'll bore Maria with this too, talking about how the American banks profited from money laundering through criminal cartels, talk about the European debt crisis that strengthened our grip on speculation and let us control the underground economies in different countries over there. It's really tedious. Mm, right. Well, one of those names do sound familiar to me. Uh, Hope. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the same one, but I give Raymond a quick rundown of who this person is. At, um, they're from Boston. Huh. Me too. Not familiar, though. Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, the only one of these people we have a phone number for is Miss Strand. I pull out my cell phone. Should I give her a call? We don't have any other leads, so I see why not. Yeah, I hope, uh, I hope Natalie and John are doing better than we are. All right. I will text the number on the, that I was given for Miss Strand. And the text message is... Hi! Exclamation point. Ray Milliner, in town for the weekend. Meet up? Question mark. Your phone starts ringing almost as soon as the message is sent. Uh, Ray Milliner. Ray Milliner, huh? Yeah, who's this? I work for Miss Strand. Okay. You looking to meet up someplace secure? That would be ideal. Uh, it's not just me, I have my associate with me. How many? Two total. We're, um, where the heck are we? I'll, uh, I'll describe the area of the city that we're in. We've kind of wandered a little farther than I thought we would. Yeah, I know it. I'll get a car sent over your way. Uh, you're gonna need to head a little deeper into town. But that's fine. That's fine. Uh, Miss Strand would be delighted to see you, I'm sure. It's not often she gets to see other members of the family. 
Well, thank you very much. Tell her that we accept her invitation and we'll be with her shortly. Just stay put. A car will meet you. Okay, thanks. It hangs up. Quite as promised. Within ten minutes, a car is pulling up nearby. A, a window winds down. A head pokes out. A man with a moustache wears shades. Looks a, looks a bit conspicuous at night. But then again, there's plenty of chauffeurs who adopt that kind of facial garb. No cap, though. He looks around, sees the two of you, the only two people just standing near this disused arcade, and with a upward inflection of his head, gestures you for... gestures for you to approach. I guess that's all right. Yeah. Wow, that was convenient. All right, let's do this. I'll approach the car and open the door for Maria. Probably not what she wants me to do, but you know, too bad. Thank you. I could have done that myself. Yeah, I know. You, uh, Melina, says the chauffeur. Yeah, it's me. Nice shades. Mm, he adjusts them. Right on. And he right on. starts to drive. You. He takes you away from the seafront and toward the largely disused industrial section of the city. Atlantic City is largely a leisure resort at this time. If you're not in the boardwalk, if you're not attending one of the casinos or going to one of the pleasure palaces here, there's not much of a reason to visit AC. And you find yourself going to traveling through the more expensive part of the city into the more middle class part of the city a few of the suburbs and Atlantic City isn't large it's long and narrow and you know that you're heading to its western edge pretty damn quickly he even cuts through a red light Miss Strand doesn't like to be kept waiting he apologizes uh, evidently not whoa I'll shoot Maria a look with a raised eyebrow. Should we be worried? Kind of been worried ever since we got here, but I don't really say that. Um, I just give him, I give Ray a firm nod uh, to be on his guard. When last we left John and Natalie, they were still at the Three Bears Hotel. John had requested the delivery of a cassette player to a separate floor of the hotel in a rather ill-thought-out manoeuvre. And Natalie had stolen some cassettes from Zingaretti's desk. Uh, there was a little bit of curiosity there, while it may not tie directly into their operation. Uh, certainly it can't hurt to know a little more about their host. You imagine that by this point the delivery should have been made, John. Hmm. In that case, I'll go where I'm hoping for it to be and, yeah, see if uh, it's there. And uh, you find outside the elevator a FedEx box that looks like it's been resealed. I will go towards the box before picking it up, just give it a little, little visual investigation, just in case there's something fishy going on. Looks to you like it was a parcel that was delivered to the hotel, and in order to get this cassette player to you, they've put it in a box and just whacked some sticky tape around it so that it doesn't come apart. And likewise, so that no one just sees a tape player laying there on the carpet. Excellent. Well, I know that Ray and uh, the bodyguard went down below. So, I guess we've got time. I'll go back to the room, see if Natalie is in the vicinity, and say, Hey! Got ourselves a tape player. Oh, uh, great. Was it the place that you planned it to be? Outside the elevator. You know what? Exactly. That's 
That's great. You put the cassette in, and there's a lot of silence. You find yourself listening to silence for quite a while, occasionally pressing the fast forward button. Indeed, it's been quite a while since you've used a cassette player. The uh, sound of the of fast forwarding it is quite refreshing in a way. But then you get to a noise, a door closing, and then you hear some voices. Where should I put it? Just drop it over there. Over here? That's right. Shall I undress now? Yeah, undress now. Where do you want me? Lay down on the sofa. Okay. That's right, spread them like that. That's what I'm paying you for. Mm -hmm. That's right, do it to yourself. And there's the sound, quite unmistakably, of a woman pleasuring herself, probably putting on a bit of an act for the guy ordering her. Okay. Now get ready. And there's some rustling. You think of clothes. You realize you're listening to what effectively amounts to an audio porno. Um, I regret finding these now. I click my teeth a little. I kind of mm. lean over and uh. just very mm. briefly uh. fast forward <laughs> and stop. Fast forward again like, oh, come on, there's got to be fucking something here. There's definitely something fucking here. You wind on, you think, by in cassette terms, probably around six minutes. And you think you have caught the moments after sexual congress has concluded. So how much do I owe you? Oh, you know, I don't take payment like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna get to the safe. You wait there. You look beautiful. No, I'm gonna dash the restroom. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. There's some footsteps. Two pairs. You hear something put down. There's a voice about a minute later. Hmm. So that's the full weight of it, huh? That's right. Whole pound of the stuff. I guess they wear it like a solid. I don't know, they drink it like a liquid. Well, it's frozen right now. So you take this to your boss and they'll be happy? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't have to do it like this. We can do the old exchange on a park bench. Yeah, but this is a bit more fun, isn't it? And anyway, Zingaretti gives us the penthouse. Shall we do it again? Oh, yeah, pushing me. It's gonna take me a couple of hours. Well, why don't you have a suck on some of that ice lolly you just gave me, and maybe it'll give you a little bit of a blue chew burst of strength. No, you know what? Uh, as much as I like you, I'm not gonna <laughs> cross them like that. They weigh this. They'll notice if there's even a liquid ounce of it missing. Your loss. I guess I'll be seeing you again. When? Whenever she wants me to. You hear a kiss. The door closes. The tape rolls on, you hear the TV go on, you can hear sports in the background, and that goes on until the tape runs out. I look to Natalie and say as I sort of flex my fingers, Okay, I'm guessing when they say penthouse, they mean this penthouse, right? Yeah, and they are obviously talking about blood, I suppose. I mean, maybe, yeah, that's what I... But 
but in a weird way, like what, like frozen or something? Can you even do that? I suppose uh, you can. How do you think you keep plasma fresh in what? hospitals? Hey, 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 I, 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 when they say frozen, I think ice cubes, you know? Well, if it's plasma, then it is frozen. Question is, who the fuck is talking and what, like, is that a ghoul? Giving blood to a woman, but she sounds possibly a ghoul herself. Neither of them sounded like us. She obviously is a part of this entire vampire deal. Since, I guess, she works for someone. Maybe she's a ghoul, as you say. Maybe she works for another vampire. I mean, all this is telling me is this guy that we are, whose hotel we're staying at, he likes hookers and drugs, and he gets his blood in a very um, unethical way. I could certainly call it that. Only the problem is this doesn't really give us anything else, does it? Ah, I kind of get up from where I was sitting and sort of pace around the window. So, I suppose I was thinking we'd wait for Ray and uh, Maria to get what they were doing done with this meeting, but I don't know, I kind of feel we should be doing something now, don't you think? I mean, there's another tape. She picks out another tape and holds it in front of her. Wanna listen to some more porn? <sighs> I mean, it doesn't really do anything for me anymore, but... Who knows, maybe that one will be different. Yeah, sure, I didn't know you had another tape. Yeah, let's let's give it a listen. Alright. I plug in the new tape and rewind it. As with before, there's several minutes of silence before any chatter starts up. You don't hear the door open this time, so that would imply that the people being recorded were already wherever the recording was taking place. You recognize the voices immediately. They're the same people who were being recorded on the last tape. What do you mean you've got no more ice lollies? Listen, I can only give you what I'm given. And... And we're, they're pulling out. They're all pulling out. They're not here anymore. They can't give you what you want. Well, you need to find another supplier. I can't just find another supplier. I'm... Listen. They call it... This... Camarilla... Is gone, as far as I know. They just decided to up and leave... Eh, over the last week. And... You think... You've got problems? Where am I supposed to be getting this blood from now? I I've got to go to those fucked up librarian types they're the only ones who have stayed behind what do they call themselves I don't care what they call themselves there was a deal your circulatory system buddies were supposed to deliver the goods via you in this penthouse to me so I could get it to my bosses that's how it was supposed to work yeah but I thought we were hooking up here to have you know you thought that. Well, yeah, you always seem to be enjoying yourself. Oh, please. Listen, this isn't gonna look badly on me. You asshole, it's gonna look badly on you. You're the one who's not supplying the goods anymore. What am I supposed to say to her, huh? Uh, sorry? Oh, I can't magic this blood out of thin air. Oh, how potent do you think your blood is? What? You know, you're a junkie. How potent do you think your blood is? Wait, wait, don't look at me like that. Don't look at me. Those are the kinds of eyes you give me usually before something else. No. Don't look at me like that. I don't like you looking at me like that. And then you hear a loud gunshot. 
and then the tape just rolls on. You occasionally hear motion, scuffing, a groan, but you're not sure who from or what it's in respect of. Eventually, just as the tape ends, you hear a door close. Well, I guess the gentleman didn't leave the room. I guess not. Um, so it's another guy. This guy was yeah. talking. Yeah, the voice definitely doesn't belong to Zingaretti. So, someone's blood supply runs out. They kill him. But who's the person who's been coming to his hotel getting a little blood fix for someone else? Um, obviously, Zingaretti must know about this since he's kept the tapes in his office locked up well I don't know what the others would say but do I recognize the voice at all no you don't recognize either voice it is a mystery and a somewhat frustrating one you're not sure how or if it connects to your reason for being here after all all you were told in very loose terms by Ray before he disappeared, was that someone in the family has loose lips, they've let loose that the promise is about to elapse, and nothing on these recordings alludes to that. That doesn't mean there's not something going on, but you're not sure whether it's something you should even be concerned with. I don't know. Um, Maybe it's just... Maybe it's just what it is. True. I mean, we can't use this information for anything anyway. Well, unless we go and ask Zingaretti nicely. Hello, we stole these tapes from your office. I hope that you can tell us the story behind them. How does that sound? Well, I'm not gonna lie, Natalie. It sounds like the sort of situation where normally I'd have to have a gun pointed against the guy's head and uh, things get quite nasty quite quickly. Hmm. Which isn't ideal, I admit. I mean, we could do that. I'm totally up for that, actually. I'll give you a little side look. I'm not entirely sure if you're joking or not. And then I nod and say, We could do that. That's an option. But the question is, fuck, will that actually help or not? Is it worth the risk? You know, if this doesn't have anything to do with anything? I let out a low sigh as I say, no. No, we're in a different city. I don't know who to trust. You, you can't just start harassing people who... He's the only one giving us some shelter. So I guess the question is, if this isn't relevant, what do we do next? Just wait around till the others get back to us? I hate waiting around. I want to go back to my sire. Since you had a taste of the outside world, Natalie as brief as it was and as scary as it was, this is a new city. You've not seen it. You arrived on the rooftop in a helicopter and since last night you've been in this hotel. It's up to you, of course, but there's plenty of entertainment that could be found in a casino, but there may be even more that could be found out on the famous boardwalk. Do you think they have any cool graveyards nearby? I mean, I'm sure they have graveyards. I don't know if I'd call them cool or not. Listen, every graveyard is special. Very special. How so? It's a place where... Peace is just... So... Engulfed in everything, you know? There's, um... A whole array of people gather in one place, yet nothing is said. And nothing is thought. The only people who are active are family and, and grieving friends. And, and there's no place on the earth like that. And that's what makes it so fascinating. And the fact that you can, you know, borrow a body once in a while. I suppose. I mean, if you put it back again after a little while, then it's fine. 
I suppose I'm not sure if I find graveyards as peaceful as you make it sound. I always feel... Well, uh... <laughs> that there's a... <laughs> well, I didn't used to believe in it, of course, but it's different now. People waiting, you know? They are waiting for you. Exactly. Although, I guess the joke's on them. I don't think we go the same places they do anyway, right? I mean, you turn to ashes, don't you? Yep. And I, I generally look a little unsure what I'm saying as I say this. I mean, we don't... Don't have a soul anymore, right? I, d I don't know how that even works. Do you need to have a soul to be in a graveyard? No. Graveyards doesn't have to have anything to do with religion. It can be... One of my favorite graveyards is... Graveyards in the forest. I like those places, they're very quiet. I may have made a few of those myself. As we're speaking, I find myself looking outside that window, and I do start thinking to myself. I turn to Natalie. You know... Maybe some of our kind, our family, hang around graveyards in this part of town. In fact, maybe... Maybe it could be worth looking into. If there was only one main graveyard, like... I don't know, maybe it's a location people use for something. Do you know how to use computers? Yeah. Could you um, search for graveyards in the area? You know, it's something to do. Why not? Why not? I mean, we might as well when we wait for Ray and Maria to come back. And if the room has a computer old laptop or some sort of like pay for service thing does, does it have something like that uh yeah it has a secure well it's advertised as a secure device a tablet that comes with the room that you can use to look up the local area or go on the internet more widely you're not charged or anything like that it's all supposed to be part of the cost of the room obviously the room was comped so the laptop or tablet is as well so yeah, you, you can find very easily local cemeteries. Uh, Atlantic City doesn't have many right near the boardwalk, because you're on the sea, but it wouldn't take long for you to travel into town and, uh, and find one if that's what you're interested in doing. Hell, even John, you know that... Some members of your clan like to frequent such areas. It may not be the daftest idea to go to a place like that to find another Hecata. I mean, the odds might not be in our favour, but considering we know nothing at the moment, it actually could be something, I think, to myself. So yes, I do start just typing away, looking to see any mage graveyards, ideally nearby. Yeah, you are able to find um, a graveyard nearby. Are you booking a taxi to go there? You can do it with the same app. I will. And as I do it, I'll look to Natalie and say, I don't suppose you know how to... Uh... <laughs> I know some of us can. Speak to the dead. Huh. <laughs> uh, I sometimes speak to the dead. Yeah, that's true. They don't answer back. But I do right. speak to them. Well, worst case scenario, maybe, who knows, maybe we'll be seen by someone who you know could help or get some night air. If anything, it's a, a way to kill some time, I guess. So sure, if you want to go see a graveyard, hey, I'll take you out to a graveyard. Sounds like a real <laughs> swell time. Yeah, doesn't it? I'm so excited. And while I'm not actually myself that keen on visiting a graveyard, for me, seeing the city, even being out of the hotel, is, for me also, actually quite... quite something, as I haven't been able to do anything like that for a, a long time. Sometimes... Speaking about the dead... Sometimes things around me die. Um... It's an ability of the blood, or so I'm told. So that's kind of a thing, I suppose. 
<laughs> well, things have a habit of dying around me, too. Uh, I, I kind of make that happen. I sort of laugh as if I was just making a very bad joke. Okay, let's go. I'm tired of being here. You head on down to the casino. You have to walk through it to get to the main doors. It's one of those wonderful designs of casinos where you are, of course, buffeted on all sides by the loud noises of coins falling, of uh, fruit machines bleeping and playing tunes of people shouting with success or crying out with failure and it's all incredibly distracting as you make your way out through the main doors into the cool night air and means you are almost completely oblivious John to the guy who has been keeping lockstep behind you who then stabs you repeatedly in the kidneys with a <gasps> the driver pulls up outside at some point this was a factory and you can see from the signage that's largely faded above the door that it was probably some kind of laundrette on a massive scale. By the looks of the broken windows, boarded up doors, it hasn't been used for at least a decade, maybe two. But that's not uncommon. Looking around out of the other windows of the car, you can see that most of the buildings on the street are the same. How quickly you've managed to go from affluent to urban decay is quite stunning. Even in, well, especially in Boston and New York, there's nowhere that transitions so swiftly. Wow, look at this place. It reminds me of Detroit. You ever see Detroit, Maria? I mean, what a hellhole. Oh, I don't know. Maybe you should walk around here and talk to the people about banks and economy if you want to help them revive it. You know, I could, right? I mean, they need to know. Financial crime and uh, people who commit them. Please you know, don't start. Please don't start now. No, we continue no. to evolve with the digital age, you know? And okay. As you leave the car, the chauffeur opening the door for you, something does come to mind, Ray. Hmm. When you and. Bryce, we're just starting out. Your old business partner. Way back when. It was... Buying old, empty properties like this that got you established. It was gentrification. It was the renovation of decayed parts of affluent cities. It was... The tearing down of buildings and memories for some families and at the time, optimistically, you both described it as giving hope to cities. Because there you were, tearing these buildings down and putting a bit of money into buildings that might offer jobs and homes to families with aspirations. Uh, it's not often you come to a part of the city like this, so you can't help but think of Bryce for just... even if it's just for a split second. In an unguarded moment, I'll let it show in my face and stare up and down the street at the wholesale urban decay on a scale that takes an egregiously damaging toll on humanity. And then I will try to recover myself and remember why we're here and what we're here to do. You know, shoot Maria a sidelong glance to see if she actually noticed. Give him a bit of a pursed smile. Don't let your guard down. Yeah, easy for you to say. You're like this, you know, heavily armed, formidable engine of destruction. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just a banker. Well, 
We all have our areas of expertise, don't we? Yeah. All right. Ahem. The chauffeur adjusts his collar. Hate to interrupt. Uh, he nods with his head toward an alley down the side of the laundrette. Says, "You can get to where you need to go if you head on down there. Uh, you'll need to take the uh, second door on the right. It's this building, but most of the doors are sealed up." Uh, have a good evening. He climbs back into his car. Turns the key. I don't bother wishing him goodbye. Wow. Down the alley. Second door to the right. Hmm. That's not hmm. suspicious. Yeah. Seems dangerous. You go first. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Ladies first. Am I right? Hey. I opened the door for you. What do you want from me? I could do without the patronizing attitude, to be honest. But oh well, I suppose it makes sense that the meat shield goes first. Hey, you just said that, you know, we're all good at different things. <laughs> Indeed. So I'll head in first. You head down the alley, which is a narrow corridor, just hardly lit at all from the flickering streetlights from the main street behind you. Uh, grass protruding from the stonework underfoot, walking over broken glass as well. This may be commonly trod, but by no means has it been kept up. And as you make your way down, you pass some again, boarded over windows. There's a few posters up on the wall here and there, really dating the area. And, yeah, the second door on the right, indeed. It would lead into the laundrette, you ascertain, and it isn't covered in boards or sealed with a metal shutter like the rest. I give Ray a quick look. Uh, just knock. I'll, I'll, I'll pantomime knocking with, you know, my hand. Give the door some firm knocks. You hear a crunch of footsteps approaching from the other side. Mm. And then the door opens, and it opens wide. There's a thin man, goatee beard, centre parting, very deep set eyes, icy, staring at you. I'm guessing you're at the plus one. Indeed. And uh, my guess is that you work for Miss Strand. Yeah, I guess. Uh, you'd guess correctly. Come on in. Is uh, Mr. Molina down in the alley? Yeah, he's right here. He steps back and makes a gesture with his arm for you to enter. I'll follow Maria in. This place was at some point housing, working conveyor belts, massive dryers. There's still the odour in the air. You're not sure how long it's been since this place was largely gutted, but the odour is still there of chemicals, of, of heat, of, of, of laundry. And now you're just seeing the a lot of upturned machinery most of the valuable parts stripped some legs that have been bolted into the floor uh, upon which something once stood but this entire room which is quite vast in size is like a graveyard for machines why don't you and he points at Maria wait here Miss Strand doesn't get to see members of the family very often, and I think she would prefer to meet uh, Mr. Molina alone. At least at first. She's a little touchy. I squint. I'm not really a fan of this suggestion. Hey, we're all the same family. <laughs> if I'm lying, I'm dying, right? Well, that'd be up to Maria, really, but yeah, okay. He smiles at Ray showing his teeth and he smiles at Maria again showing his teeth alright let's do this Maria um, it's cool hang for a few uh, 
Remember our prearranged signal? <laughs> My scream. Hey, Miss Mr. Molina, right? Yeah. Not nothing's nothing's gonna happen to you. Uh, Miss Strand is. Listen, <laughs> I've got your back as well. I'm paid by the family. I'm not gonna let anything happen to you. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, lead the way. The goated man gives a bit of a performative wave at Maria as he walks off behind Ray and says, uh, you just need to uh, head left around, well, that used to be a dryer, uh, you know, gargantuan, I think, uh, and uh, into the office, that's it, that one right there, you, you it's the one where the glass is still in its windows. Mm, lovely. I guess I'll make myself at home in this very homey place you've got. Hey, it won't be long. Mm. We'll be calling on you. Do you follow the directions, Ray? I do. I will try to keep an eye out for anything that looks like I should be worried about it, but I don't have Maria's talents for you know, espionage, demolitions, surveillance, uh, or really pretty much anything. So I, I don't even know what I'm looking for. What you do spot, Ray, is a lot, a hell of a lot of black mold crawling up the walls here. The rank smell of mildew increasing which usually you wouldn't even pick up not being a breather but even this penetrates your nostrils and as you make your way closer to the office you hear the screech and skitter of you're not sure how many rats again this is very much out of your element Duh. great reminds me of like family vacations on Long Island. Ugh. Always hated that. Hey, you can't control the rats in this city, right? Yeah. Just through that door. <laughs> the rats. Through the door. Here we go. I'll follow his instructions. You enter the office. And the door is unlocked. And there's a wizened looking woman. You're not even sure how old she was at the time of Embrace. In fact, you're not even sure that she's undead, let alone, well, alive. She looks like a dried out corpse, and she is just stood there on the other side of the door, staring at you. Her eyeballs orbs bulging in her sockets where the skin around them has just retracted back to show these yellowish whitish balls sticking out of her face just glaring at you her lips thin and black her teeth a fangs bared and both of her hands most curiously enough coated in well, you harbour no illusions, Ray. That's definitely blood. And you can see a thick trail of blood behind her leading deeper into the office, but I assume you don't fixate too long on where the trail leads as she's holding these hands out towards you. Wow, it really is like family reunions. Okay, I will suppress a shudder and step forward... I know better than to flinch. I'll reach for her hands with mine. And I will give her a lowering of my head that's somewhere between a nod and a bow. Miss Strand, I'm Ray Milliner. Raymond, good evening. Raymond, Raymond Milliner. She squeezes your hands in hers. You can feel the blood caking between her fingers and your palms. I resist the temptation to bend my head low and have a taste to lick the encrusted blood off her fingers. 
Mm, and it is fresh. <laughs> but there's another smell with it. There's a smell of old death. And she squeezes your hands. You're making it just... Thank you. Thank you for, for making this so easy for me. And you feel huh? a dreadful wrench what? from inside your chest. Ah! It's not it's not your heart, it's not your bones. You, you can't say you've ever felt your soul before. You're not even sure if you have one. But there is something ephemeral, there is something powerful and potent just being sapped from your body down your arms and towards her hands as those bulging eyeballs just stay locked your vision meeting hers and her snarling thank you thank you You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we played The Family, a Cults of the Blood Gods chronicle for Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition. Cults of the Blood Gods is published by our friends at Onyx Path Publishing. Our storyteller was the gentleman gamer Matthew Dawkins, and we were also joined by Jason Carl, Clara Herbal, and Bianca Savazzi. The music was created by Atrium Carceri, featuring many collaborations with other artists from their label, Cryo Chamber. Check them out at cryochamber.bandcamp.com and their YouTube channel for more amazing Dark Ambient. If you want more Vampire the Masquerade content, don't miss out on our chronicle No Man is an Island, as well as The Sacrifice for Chicago by Night. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Hoyshaubert, Nastasha Rollerson, Simon Cooper, and David for their generous support. And we would of course like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, the show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult Divinity Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear your name read on the show as a champion of the Red Moon, as well as play Cult with us. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. Thank you again for listening, and see you soon again.